years back in March 2020 a mass exodus of migrant workers from the cities to villages took place due to the coronavirus outbreak a sudden lockdown left thousands of migrant workers on roads seen walking hundreds of miles to reach their villages or in their words home this incident raised a number of questions about the financial and social insecurity that a huge section of the service provider community face most people left the cities at that point of time mainly because of two reasons one because of the lockdown employment was at a halt and the second and the most important one was an affordable and unhygienic housing conditions where these workers and their families lived as covid-19 spread rapidly in dense informal settlements during the first wave the problem of congestion lack of water and sanitation experienced by the urban poor including migrants were brought back into focus it seems that government too had suddenly realized that a large section of its workforce doesn't have affordable and livable houses in the cities where they come for their livelihood so to combat this problem the modi government came up with a new scheme called arhc or the affordable rental housing complexes in simple words this scheme focuses on providing affordable rental houses to urban poor migrant workers street vendors and people belonging to ews categories This scheme was launched in July 2020, 4 months after the lockdown and is a part of PM Modi's ongoing scheme Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. It is being implemented in partnership between the public and private sectors and offers two models. In the first model, the government converts all the vacant houses built under the previous housing schemes such as Rajiv Gandhi Awas Yojana and Jawaharlal Nehru National Urban Renewal Mission. The government included private real estate companies in this model to renovate these houses. In the second model, the ARHC scheme provides a specific regulatory framework to facilitate the construction of rental complexes each complex is supposed to have minimum of 40 apartments including singles doubles and dormitories the private developers will take care of the maintenance and infrastructure of these complexes further the scheme includes special provision around the land use permits to add 50% more floor space in plots without paying a premium and more importantly exemptions from the existing rent control laws providing trunk infrastructure such as roads and electricity is also the responsibility of local municipalities the main difference between this scheme and the previous schemes that aim to provide affordable housing is that before this all housing schemes run by the government focused on house ownerships even in pm awas yojana house ownership is incentivized through loans and subsidies to beneficiaries now As per the government data there are about 1 crore 90 lakh under constructed and vacant houses in the country these houses were built under the previous housing schemes for urban poor so the question here is has this scheme been able to bring any real change on the ground and if yes why don't we hear more about it in this video we will discuss the progress of this scheme and the challenges and concerns flagged by many state governments and civil society bodies it's been 2 years since the scheme launched and chandigarh is the only place that has been able to convert all its vacant houses into arhc rental homes let alone converting there are still two state governments that haven't signed the moa a memorandum of affiliation with the central government on this scheme one of the major issues is the lack of coordination between the states and the central government since the old housing schemes focused on the ownership of the houses the rental scheme disrupted the planning of the state governments under the purview of the old scheme the two states that haven't signed the moa yet are delhi and west bengal delhi recently agreed to come on board with the central government but with the condition that central government will leave 18000 houses as these houses are already in the process of allotment under the purview of the previous housing schemes hamare taraf se hum koshish kar rahe the ye dono ek sath chale aur ab tak hum agar iska permission mila hota to wo 9000 family aur lagbhag 25 30000 aur jo family jinko rental mein hame bhejna tha hum kar diye hote ars ke sath ek samasya aur aa rahi thi hame क्योंकि ये क्लियर नहीं था कि ये स्कीम किस तरह से लागू करना है क्या होगा इसके प्रोविजंस कैसे होंगे इसमें इसको रेगुलेट कौन करेगा जिसकी बात मैंने की है तो वो भी एक संसा मतलब वो भी एक कंफ्यूजन का कंडीशन स्टेट मैं केवल दिल्ली की बात नहीं कर रहा हूँ कई स्टेट में ऐसा हुआ होगा 
और ऐसा कहीं दिख नहीं रहा कि बहुत बड़े लेवल पे कहीं लागू हो गया हो अभी भी ये कंसल्टेशन के प्रोसेस में बहुत जगह हुआ चल रहा है और यही कारण था जो थोड़ा डिले हुआ In August 2021, the India Housing Report, along with the Center for Policy Research and Working People's Charter, studied this scheme in ten cities. The biggest problem is that most of these housing complexes are located on the outskirts of the cities. Due to their peripheral locations, connectivity through public transportation is almost zero. This is also the main reason that these houses are still vacant. To understand the first model of this scheme, NewsClick's team also travelled to one of the vacant housing complexes in Delhi, Sevda. Khera area. This complex might soon be a part of ARHC scheme. In our report, we found that the project is located around 25 km away from New Delhi railway station and takes almost two hours from the city centres to reach there. The infrastructure of the building was also lying in poor condition, with access to occasional water service and no public transportation. All these factors raise some serious questions about the conceptualisation of this scheme. Right now, they are focusing only on the already existing houses. that have been constructed under various schemes and just imagine i mean the, the houses that were constructed for the poor of the cities if they have not been occupied in such a long span of 10 15 years why would somebody now go and uh, take them on rental basis whereas the same houses were supposed to be given to them either free of cost or maybe some nominal amount you know where are these houses they have not constructed any new house under the arhc it's all the houses that have been constructed uh, either bsup that's the basic service to govern uh, plan or the jnnurm still existing or you know the rajiv awas yojana and then the rajiv awas yojana uh, metamorphoses into the uh, prime minister's uh, pmay okay so yeah so it's pmay also which is there so uh, so that, that's that's i think something very interesting because uh, they've not taken that into consideration that's the first thing The second thing is, if you see the quality of the construction, most of these houses, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, no one would, I mean, even the cattle wouldn't like to stay in in, in those houses. So, I, I think that quality of construction is a, a major because some of the places that the that were visited uh, uh, shows a deplorable, uh, complete deplorable state of uh, uh, affairs and construction. So, uh, I don't think anyone would love to go there. and mark my words i mean the houses that they've constructed are new slums a slums designed and constructed by the parasitals or even by the city government in this discussion there is one question related to affordability what do we consider to be an affordable rental space in india a house is considered affordable for the lower income group if the rent does not exceed 30% of the households in monthly income this benchmark was set by task force in 2008 under the guidance of the union ministry of housing and urban affairs similarly migrant workers live in a very different pattern study shows that the workers share rooms and on average pay between 500 to 700 per month on individual basis how does this scheme address the complexities of living status as we noted in the report uh, the projected rents that are listed in the policy document Uh, for instance they say for a single bed or i mean for a single bed in dormitory style housing which they envision being constructed they are estimating a rent of 3000 rupees a month now this is uh, based on our study of migrant workers as we said this is anywhere from uh, uh, you know three times to one and a half times more than in fact roughly three to four times more than most workers are paying currently so it's not clear how this is going to be any in any way more affordable There doesn't seem to be actually any provision for ensuring these rents are affordable. It seems to rather just be assumed that just by increasing the amount of housing stock, uh, rents will come down. And as I noted earlier, it's not clear how this scheme will increase the amount of housing stock either. So I would agree with your interview in the Delhi government that the entire scheme seems quite incoherent. It's uh, it's not clear what this is intended to achieve beyond an announcement. Since the scheme is exempted from rental laws and private companies play an important role here there is this constant fear that if all the stakeholders voices are not taken into account which includes the civil society trade unions and workers welfare organizations this scheme will soon become a profit making machine for private companies rather than a welfare program as a result of these issues the government can only fully implement this scheme if it takes a proactive approach to address these issues